So I stole the steps that we wrote out from example one and example two. Again, how do we graph these functions? First of all, we factor. Once we factor, we look at non-permissible values to determine if we have holes or vertical asymptotes. If you have a hole because something simplifies, you note what the hole is, and then you graph the simplified equation. You sort of redo steps one and two with your new simplified equation. The next thing you look at is whether or not you have horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. And finally, you do nice points, and those nice points include all of your x-intercepts and all of your y-intercepts. And then sometimes you need more points, sometimes you don't. So again, we're doing the steps and doing all of it all at once rather than these questions ask for only small things at a time. You can see that question three is the first time that they sort of walk us through the steps. It says, for the graph of each function, find the non-permissible values. Well, we would need to factor to do that first and then find out if it's a hole or a vertical asymptote. Then after you've done that, determine horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes. That's our step three. And this question says determine the domain, but we're actually going to graph it because that's what we've been doing all the way through. So for part A, we start out by factoring. The top cannot be factored, but the bottom is a difference of squares. Right? If you like to number things, that was step one. Step two, our non-permissible values, what would make us divide by zero? X can't equal negative two or two. And we have to determine Will those non-permissible values become vertical asymptotes or will they become holes? Do any of those factors cancel out? No, so there's no holes. They will both be vertical asymptotes. So we can say vertical asymptotes at, and when we write an equation of an asymptote, it's an equal sign at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 2. Step three, to figure out horizontal asymptotes or oblique asymptotes, you have to look at the degree in your numerator compared to your degree in your denominator. Can you see in this equation, the degree in our denominator is larger? Every time that the degree is larger in your denominator, you will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Step 4 then is going to graph it. If I draw all of my asymptotes, I have an asymptote at x equals negative 2 at 1 at x equals 2 and a horizontal 1 at y equals 0. For step 4, we need to find our nice points. The y-intercept is the easiest because you plug in 0 for x. I often go back to my original equation for that. If I plug in 0 for x, I'm going to get negative 4 over negative 4, which is positive 1. There's my y-intercept. I'm going to label it 1 comma 0. What about x-intercepts? The x-intercepts is where you look at your factored equation. 
If you plug in 0 for y, the only place a factor, I mean a fraction can equal 0 is if your numerator equals 0. You can ignore the bottom. In fact, you could multiply both sides by x plus 2, x minus 2, and get rid of the bottom. The other side would still be 0. Does that make sense? And so now I just have x minus 4 equals 0. What's my x-intercept? 4. Okay. Again, this feels a little bit weird because we have an asymptote at y equals 0. But it is possible, as in this case, to have a point on a horizontal asymptote, even though there's an asymptote there. What a horizontal asymptote is just telling you is it's telling you what happens when the values get very large, not necessarily what's happening in the middle of our graph. So now we have to decide, do we have enough points in each of the sections to graph it? Okay. And what I mean by each of the sections is that your domain is broken up by your vertical asymptotes. In this situation, we have three sections, not six. You don't say one, two, three, four, five, six with the horizontal asymptote, but just x is less than negative two, section one, in between section two, and larger than two, section three. The only section that you have enough information to graph right now is the middle section. How do I know it's enough? Well, I know that my graph has to go towards an asymptote. And the question is, from 1, 0, should it go down towards the asymptote or up towards the asymptote? I know that it has to go up because I don't have any more x-intercepts. I found that the only x-intercept was at 4, 0. Can you see if I went down, I would make another x-intercept? Same thing. Over here, it's going to have to go up towards the asymptote for that reason. If you're uncomfortable with that, you could find more points. But that's enough for that section. Notice we have nothing in the section when x is less than negative 2. So what we need to do is we need to find a point. I'm going to plug in negative 3. Can you see in your numerator you would get negative 7? And in your denominator, negative 3 plus 2 would be negative 1. Negative 3 minus 2 would be negative 5. What does that simplify to? A negative number. I'm going to get negative 3, and then this is going to be 7 fifths, negative 7 fifths estimate where that would be, a little bit more than negative 1. Now that I have that point, it's enough information in this section to say that it has to go towards the asymptote. It can't go through the x-intercept again because I've already found all of my x-intercepts. The last section when x is bigger than 2, we have a point, but that point doesn't really help us because it's right on the x-axis. It could go up towards the asymptote or down towards the asymptote. So to figure out which way it's going, I'm going to plug in positive 3. So I'm going to take out my eraser. Erase these values in here. And I'm going to plug in positive 3. So in, in the top, 3 minus 4, that will give me negative 1. In my denominator, plugging in 3, my first bracket will be a 5. My second bracket will be 1. There we go. 
So this is negative 1, this is 5, this is 1. Can you see that you will get negative 1 fifth? Where is that point? It's right here. 3 comma negative 1 fifth. I now know that it has to go down. On the other side, I'm going to plug in positive 5. Take out my eraser again. Can you see that if you plug in positive 5, Five minus four will be one. Five plus two will be seven. Five minus two will be three. You will get one over 21, which means that is a little bit above. So your graph goes up to that point, and then it will curve back down and approach your asymptote again. So this example is one where we had to find a number of values to finally get the graph. So in the last step where it says nice points, sometimes your x-intercepts and y-intercepts are enough. Sometimes you have to find a whole bunch, like a new table of values, to really get a sense of what the graph is. If you're ever uncomfortable about something that you found a table of values for, find some more points. Because sometimes you can make a mental math error when finding that table of values and you get a point that doesn't seem to match. Then you might want to find some more points just to check. And then you might want to look at that point and try it again to see if you actually made a mental math error in labeling that point. How do we write the domain for something like this? Because this question did say, what is the domain? Well, the easiest way to write your domain is it's everything but x can't equal negative 2 and x can't equal positive 2 but everything else is okay. So that's the most simplistic way to write it. If you wanted to use interval notation, you start at negative infinity and then you go up to negative 2 but don't include it. Then you start again on the other side of negative 2 and go to positive 2 and don't include it. Then you start again on the other side of 2 and go to infinity. Both of those notations would be fine for writing the domain. I find the first one easier. Just say what it can't be and say it's everything else. So what did we do again? We factored to begin with. We found our non-permissible values and determined they were vertical asymptotes. We then looked at the degree in the numerator, degree in the denominator, to determine what kind of horizontal or oblique asymptote we had. Okay, a review of that. This one had the degree bigger on the bottom. That always has a horizontal asymptote at zero. If the degrees are the same, you will always have a horizontal asymptote at the coefficients of those larger the largest degree. And if the degree is larger in your numerator, you have the possibility of an oblique asymptote if it's still bigger in your numerator after you've taken out any holes. So let's look at B Step one, we want to factor this. Top is a difference of squares. Bottom is a difference of squares. Step two, list your non-permissible values. X can't equal negative three, and X can't equal three. We're just looking for where are the values that make us divide by 0. From there, we have to decide, are those going to be holes or vertical asymptotes? Nothing cancels out. They're all vertical asymptotes. 1 at x equals negative 3. 
1 at x equals 3. Step 2 is done. Step 3. Do we have a horizontal asymptote or an oblique asymptote? In this situation, can you see the degree is the same in our numerator and in our denominator? Okay? Nothing simplified, so we can go back to our original equation. If something's simplified, then you would have to look at your new equation. But since the degrees are the same, we have a horizontal asymptote, and now we just look at the coefficients of that biggest degree. You can ignore everything else. Can you see the coefficient on the top is 1? The coefficient on the bottom is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay? So at this point, I often I start graphing. I like to draw all of my asymptotes on my graph. What do we know? We know that we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and x equals minus 3, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. For a nice points, find your y-intercepts and x-intercepts. For my y-intercept, which is the easiest, I often go back to my original equation, or if it's simplified, you'd go back to the simplified equation. Plug in 0 for x. Can you see you get negative 4 over negative 9? Our y-intercept is 4 ninths. <coughs> Label that on your graph. Zero comma four ninths. Our x intercepts. If you make y equals to zero, the only time you can get an, a fraction equal to zero is if your numerator is equal to zero. So looking at our numerator already factored, you can see that we have two x intercepts. They are at x equals positive 2 and x equals negative 2. So you can label those points 2 comma 0, negative 2 comma 0. And we have enough information in the middle section to graph. Do we need more points? Yes because we haven't graphed anything less than negative 3 or anything bigger than 3. Okay, so I'm going to take out my purple pen here. Since my asymptote is at negative 3, does it make sense that I should plug in negative 4 to get something less than negative 3? Negative 4 into each of these factors. Negative 4 plus 2, negative 2. Negative 4 minus 2, negative 6. Negative 4 plus 3, negative 1. Negative 4 minus 3, negative 7. Multiply this out, and you get positive 12 sevenths. Where would that point be? Okay, 12 over 7 is bigger than 1. So we have negative 4, 12 over 7. We're in that section, you can draw it towards your asymptotes. We need a point bigger than 3, so I'm going to plug in 4, take out my eraser. Plug in positive 4, I'm going to get 6, 2, 7, 1. 
oh, it happens to be 12 over 7 again. So we have the point four comma twelve over seven. Again, we have now enough information to draw that section towards the asymptotes, and we've got our complete graph. Again, this one asked for the domain. So if you were doing the domain here, you could say x can't equal negative three, x can't equal three. but x can be anything else. Okay, try questions 9 and 10. And again, try to graph it completely. 